the perfect gift of love. Um, there is basically um, four Sundays that uh, we look at during the Advent season. Advent, Advent simply means first season of the Christian church year leading up to Christmas. So we look at those four weeks and we give special attention to those four weeks because they all should focus on Christmas, the birth of Jesus. As I started to mention earlier and kind of got goofed up with, it was hope, peace, joy, and love. And this week we're covering and focusing on love. Jesus, the perfect gift of love. If you think about it, some people might not realize. Let me back up. You know, people get uh, so concerned about Christmas and uh, the gifts that we're going to get and the fine meal that we're going to we're going to eat and the fine clothes that we're going to wear. I, incidentally, this is my once a year coat. <laughs> people will say, "Wow, that's a that's a fancy coat." Well, I just wear it once a year. I'm usually not quite this colorful. Um, but uh, we need to realize that there's more than Chris Christmas than just nice clothes and gifts that we're going to get. And when you get the gifts, who do you focus on? On yourself. What did I get? I got them that gift. They got, uh, you know, and that was a really nice gift. But what they gave me was just a handkerchief or, or a sweater or a t-shirt. But you know, we need to look at Christmas from the standpoint of Jesus. Jesus, the perfect gift of love. And hopefully, as I go through this, uh, you will be able to, um, to understand that and pick that up. We're going to start in Luke, the second chapter. And uh, starting in verse uh, verse 25, and read down through quite a bit of this, uh, I'm going to throw at you several scriptures today, so please don't be frustrated. Follow along if you can, or if you don't have a Bible, just listen. But Luke, the second chapter, verse starting in verse 25. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, or Simeon, who was a righteous, who was righteous and devout. In fact, Simeon was, was a priest of God. Yeah. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was waiting for the comforting yeah. of Israel. He had heard about this coming Messiah, and he was waiting for that. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Wow, what a promise. Uh, you won't die before you see the Lord's Messiah, Simeon. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the uh, parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your, your servant in peace. In other words, I have now seen the Messiah. He's a baby, but I'm ready to die now. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light for salvation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what uh, was said about him. Now, Jesus, at that point, was only eight days old when they took him to the, to the temple. He was only eight days old. Mary and Joseph listened to what Simeon said, and they marveled at what he said, because this was new to them. They had their little baby. They knew his name would be Jesus, but now this priest of God, this prophet of God, said these wonderful things about 
Jesus. Turn, go back up to verse 21 of Luke 2. On the eighth day, as I mentioned, on the eighth day when it was time to circumcise a child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to prepare him, to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves and two young pigeons. So they took Jesus to the temple to be circumcised in eight days and also to make this particular sacrifice. Going on, Back to verse uh, 34, where I left off. Verse 34. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined uh, to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. So he's telling them that Jesus came with a purpose and that also you, Mary, your soul will be pierced. Uh, a sword will pierce your own soul too. You're going to see your son die. You're going to see him crucified. But that's the reason he came into the world, to be crucified. Um, I want to go on. Okay, in verse 36, there was also a prophet. Now, I wonder about that word prophet, if it should not be prophetess, because it was a woman. But anyway, it says, there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying, coming up to them at that very moment. So she was in the temple also. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child uh, to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary, this is verse 39, when uh, Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This child, this child that she now told everybody about that came into the temple. She had had a chance to see him. The child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Now, uh, let's take a, take a look at the birth of Jesus. Uh, we'll see that in Matthew 2, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 2, verses 1 and 2. And this is talking about the Magi from the East, or as many have called them now through the years, we've heard about them, being the wise man. Okay, verse 1 of chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the East came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and came. We have uh, we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Verse eleven. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. 
Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gifts that were fit for a king. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And these magi were wealthy people. They came from the east. So they had, they were wealthy. And they came to this king because they had heard about him and they wanted to, to worship him. There were also shepherds that knew about the birth of Jesus. Let's go back to Luke, Luke 2, verse 8. Luke 2, verses 8, starting in verse 8. The shepherds hear about Jesus' birth. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. And angels of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find him wrapped, the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God. Now, get the picture. Hubert Ticus, in speaking of life, talked about this choir that was singing. They were praising to these shepherds who were out of the field with sheep. Can you imagine them out there and a heavenly host singing and praising God about what they were telling these shepherds? Going on in verse 14, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. 15. When the angels uh, had uh, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that was has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby uh, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Go through another script picture. Turn to Isaiah chapter 9. So we see even in the Old Testament times, uh, they talked about the birth of Jesus. It was prophesied even in the Old Testament. Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7. For to, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Yes. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, yes. establishing and upholding the, with, it with justice and righteousness that from that time on and forever. So even then, and we know that, even then in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to a Savior. Ezekiel 5, 34. Ezekiel 34. Verse 15. 
I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. Did you get that? I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Jesus said in prophecy, I will shepherd the flock with justice. So he's coming back and he's going to bring justice. Um, now this is how the child Jesus will rule. He is the perfect gift of love Amen. for all mankind. Yes. Justice. Yes. Wow. It would be just so great if there was justice in this society. Amen. There is just not justice. Amen. Those who have one more. Yes, according to John 10, 11, Jesus is our shepherd. Is he your shepherd? Amen. You know, a shepherd has flock. A shepherd has sheep in the field. And he looks after them. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. They say what? The shepherd will leave the 99 and go get one sheep that's caught in a fence. According to John 10, 11, Jesus is our shepherd. Lamentations 3. Lamentations is a few books before Ezekiel. Lamentations 3, verses 31 through 33. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. That means without a cause. There is a cause. The Bible says many of the afflictions are the righteous. But there's a cause. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. There is a reason that he does that. Jesus, Jesus has unfailing love. There is a purpose or a cause in our afflictions. Don't just look at the affliction. So at Christmas time, we as Christians believe that Jesus came to this earth because of his divine love, his unfailing love. What's Mr. Washington's favorite scripture? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave, or that he introduced into the world his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's love. For God so loved the world that he introduced into the world, he gave, his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will live forever. That's love. That's love, y'all. For everybody. We're talking about from the people of the Old Testament to the people of the New Testament the people of right now, all of us. He gave his son because of his love for us. 
So at Christmas time, the greatest gift of love is Jesus, Amen. the Savior of the world. I, I want to share with you a, a little special story that I came across uh, a, a while back. And it's called A Love Like That. A Love Like That. He couldn't do anything for himself. Born with cerebral palsy, he sat in the, in the wheelchair, loving every second of the Christmas musical. He faces challenges I can't even imagine. Uh, his body racked with a disease with no cure. He sat in the back of the auditorium, perhaps wanting not to distract, and sitting next to him was a proud mother. I can't help, I couldn't help stealing a glance throughout the evening to see her stroking his hair, wiping his mouth, and smiling all the while. She adored him. I had to meet this adoring mother. She was a single mom who had just moved to Tennessee from Kansas. How do you do this all by yourself, I asked. He's my life. He's the greatest blessing that ever happened to me, she said. This two-person family had an eternal effect on me. I received a glimpse of the love God has for me. Despite my constant battles with sin and personal rebellion, God loves me like that. Can you imagine it? <laughs> Despite all the stuff we put him through, he still loves us. And it goes back to the beginning when he was willing even then uh, to sacrifice his sons for us. Yes. In conclusion, God is God and the God of all heaven and earth. Yes. He is almighty God. Yes. There is no greater, there is none greater than he. He is Alpha and Omega, and He has a tremendous plan of salvation for all mankind based on His love for us. His fail-safe fail plan was to create physical man out of the dirt of the ground, deal with him in his flesh and blood physical weaknesses, and then offer the gift of Jesus Christ for the inherent weakness, weakness physical man would experience. Jesus entered the world as a baby, grew as a baby and into manhood, lived a perfect life, and died as an atonement for sinful man to satisfy the penalty of death required by a righteous God. For man to enter into God's family into his righteous family. That was Jesus' purpose. Jesus came into the world, fulfilled that mission, and became our eternal Savior forever. Perfect gift of love. Uh, you can't ask for anything more. And that's what this period represents. We're going to transition into communion. Um, as Jesus said, 